Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the larynx or voice box and how it's used for sound production. We're going to look at where the larynx is found, its function, structure, how it creates sound and how it creates, creates phonation. Uh, so firstly, the larynx is found in the throat. Uh, it's at the front of the neck, at the top of the trachea. And if you feel your neck, you'll be able to feel the hard cartilage there. Uh, in men, you'll have an Adam's apple at the front there. And it sits at the junction where the pharynx, being the tube that goes from the back of the mouth, uh, splits off into the trachea going to the lungs and the esophagus going to the stomach. Uh, now, one of the important parts of the larynx is the epiglottis, which is a flap at the top of the larynx, which closes to stop food and drink going down into the lungs and making sure it goes to the esophagus. Uh, there are three main functions. The production of sound, is, and that's what we're going to concentrate on in this video. Uh, it also needs to allow air to pass through it when we're not talking, so when we're just breathing, having that air going in and out, unhindered as well as, as I said, closing off the trachea uh, so that food and water don't enter the trachea because that would be a problem. And the epiglottis is the part that does that. So the larynx is made up of nine pieces of cartilage and these are all joined by membranes, muscles, ligaments which hold it all together. And basically it forms, or we call it the voice box because it forms this box shape or this tube and this allows the sound to resonate and get a bit louder than it would if it was not this larger box. Uh, so some of the main pieces of cartilage we have are the thyroid cartilage, and that's the um, large piece of cartilage that you can feel in your neck where the Adam's apple is found at the front, as well as the cricoid cartilage, uh, and that is below that uh, thyroid cartilage and is important because it's one of the attachment points for the vocal cords. Now, as I said before, at the top of the trachea, uh, correction, at the top of the larynx, we have the uh, epiglottis, which actually sits above another structure called the glottis. Uh, and at below the larynx, we have the trachea, which is the pipe that goes to the lungs. Uh, inside that box, we have the vocal cords, as I said before. Now, here's a top-down view of the larynx, and you can see that we've got that uh, thyroid cartilage, uh, which is just out of shot, then the cricoid cartilage, which has the vocal cords attached to it, and those vocal cords then attach to uh, some of the other minor pieces of cartilage at the back of the larynx. Now, those uh, vocal cords are able to open the larynx up to allow air to pass in and out, as well as tightening and closing, bringing those vocal cords close together to create sound. The way that we create sound starts with the lungs. They're the way that we get the air running across our vocal cords. So when the lungs exhale, which involves the diaphragm and the interstitial muscles. Uh, these are the muscles that are between the ribs and allow the expansion and contraction of the ribs. So when they uh, cause the lungs to exhale, air rushes up the trachea and through the larynx. The vocal cords are then pulled tight and uh, come close together. And the rushing of the air between them creates a buzzing sound. Okay, so they start vibrating and create this buzzing sound. Now, how tight and how far apart those vocal cords are going to be depends on the type of sound that you're creating. If you're trying to create a high-pitched sound, uh, they'll be very tight and very close together. And for a more low-pitched sound, they'll be further apart uh, and not as tight. Now, in men, uh, during puberty, the vocal cords actually get thicker, uh, and this causes men to have a lower voice in general because um, kind of like the strings on a guitar, the thicker the string or the thicker the vocal cord, uh, the slower that it vibrates. Now, the final stage of actually getting to speech, so we've created the sound through the larynx, uh, but the final stage of getting 
that to speech from a sort of buzzing or droning sound is called phonation. Uh, and that phonation has all these associated structures that are involved in it, in particular uh, the echo that happens in the sinus, so in the back of the nose, uh, in the cranium. Now this is important uh, to actually get that sound, and you'll notice that uh, when you've got a cold uh, and or, or a sinus, sinitis, uh, and all that sinus is blocked, that when you talk you don't sound the same. Other things that are involved in making the shapes with the mouth uh, so that we can produce vowels and consonants are the soft palate of the mouth, the cheeks, tongue and lips. And by moving these around in different uh, ways, we get all the different sounds that we make in speech. In this video, we have looked at the larynx. We've looked at the location of the larynx being at the top of the trachea, at the front of the neck. The function being to create sound as well as allow air across it and close off in, to stop food and water getting in. Uh, the structure being made up of cartilage, ligaments, membranes, and muscles and how we create sound by first the air coming out of uh, or being pushed out of our lungs through the larynx and then the vocal cords uh, coming together at different uh, tensions to make different sounds and vibrate uh, then the phonation coming from the sinus and how we move our mouth coming into uh, speech thanks for watching guys peace out